One thing I learned early is spend the money and hire the studio musicians because they make your job so much easier. And you just tell them what you want. They play it in two passes and it's like, this is done. This is a record. My uncle Ronnie, who's actually the drummer in the play Chicago on Broadway, best thing he ever told me, he's like, as a drummer, he'd sit in the music room playing the drums, but he'd always go in the control room and listen to how it sounded in there. One thing you learn early on with, as a drummer is that Tom fills don't sound so great on a pop record. They just don't cut through. You know, you start going, doop, 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 doop. it gets lost on a pop record. But snare fills sound great. So when you play things like, blah, blah, doop, 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 doop. like on the snare, it just cuts through everything. So you start changing the way you play drums based on that stuff. Or you play a kick drum consistently because if you play a kick hard and soft, it gets lost. But when you hit that kick the same way every time, it just translates. Boom. But, but right there. So all those things that you didn't think were important when you're practicing, you re-practice how you play as a drummer because you realize it's got to translate to the speakers that way. And that's the difference between a good drummer and a great studio drummer.